Q star, Q star, Q star. Maybe it seems like the Q star might be actually real. So I decided to revisit my opinion about Q star. And in this video, we're going to see certain important components. And a lot of things are speculation. And a lot of things are actually what I collected as facts. So let's see how it goes. The first thing that we're going to see is like, what, what is happening with this? And we are also going to understand different perspectives about Q star. And we're going to look at something called PRM and how it performs with math. And we're going to quickly take a look at the super alignment and what happened before and after with OpenAI. And finally, we're going to talk about an interesting concept called Q transformers, but not from OpenAI. To start with, very recently, The Verge had published a news article in which they asked Sam Altman a question about the Q star model breakthrough. And Sam Altman said no particular comment on that unfortunate leak. So when somebody says it is an unfortunate leak, everybody started speculating maybe it was actually real and it got leaked. I mean, that's why you would call it a leak. Either Sam Altman is actually feeding all the people on Twitter and media or he's actually saying that it is a leak. Along with that, he also said that we are saying the same thing that what we have been saying before is that we expect progress in this technology to continue to be rapid and also that we expect con to continue to work hard to figure out how to make it safe and beneficial. I mean, and then you have all the corporate stuff. The point here is that maybe, maybe, like I'm not saying exactly, but maybe there was something related to this. So there was something and that got leaked and uh, Sam Altman kind of seemed to acknowledge it. Now, what is this Q star? Now, that is a part where there is a lot of speculation. Speculation one, Q star could be a new algorithm that might have advanced OpenAI to solve all the math. That's one. The second thing is Q star could be something like the Q star on Star Trek. It could be like a code name for a project that has got like immense um, knowledge, super intelligence and all these kind of things. So this, this could be a code name or this could be actually an algorithm name. Another possibility that a lot of people speculated, even Jan Likun has acknowledged this one, is that the current LLMs cannot be AGI. So if you want to do AGI, you need to solve search. I mean, you need to have LLMs, but with search. And that is where something like this could come in. And in fact, like uh, somebody has mentioned that this sounds a lot like Q learning, which could be a combination of um, Q star, uh, which could be a combination of Q learning plus A star which is like a, like an optimization algorithm. So our natural guess is uh, that AlphaGo style Monte Carlo st tree search of the token trajectory. So basically, if you want to solve for AGA, you need to solve for search, some something like graph search. And now, because this brought in like, you know, tree tokens and graph search, this also gave me um, something to connect with, which just happened like a couple of days back, which is, DeepMind, the Google's um, OpenAI equivalent, actually released a new paper, a new announcement saying that their deep learning model had discovered millions of new materials which were not discovered by human beings. I'm not sure whether this is AGI or not. That's all. They're not calling it AGI, but their new AI tool called Genome, Genome, why? Anyways, finds 2.2 million new crystals. And if you see how this genome is created, this is a deep learning tool that is part of graph neural networks. So graph neural network. And when you combine this with the speculation about like you need to solve for search, it's a possible combination of reinforcement learning with some kind of like a tree thoughts or a, a search algorithm with some graph neural networks. So it could be possible. And somewhere in um, March, um, there was a GitHub issue that was raised with OpenAI evils and that was about Q learning evil. This did not get merged. It was actually closed because of no lack of activity. But actually, you can go here and then see that this person who whoever raised this uh, PR talks about this is a this is a community PR, not not from OpenAI. But if you go here and then see, it talks about you know importance of Q learning and basically you know how Q learning aims to find the optimal policy for an agent to take an action that will give maximized reward. And it also talks about Q value function and um, it talks about why this PR is improvement. Surprisingly, the person who made this PR, their account is called Singularity X Studios. I'm, I, don't, I don't know, maybe it's a joke, but this something happened um, back in March. Now, uh, 
leaving that all aside like i wanted to quickly jump into something that happened like way back um, which is what open has been calling us super intelligence open ai started talking about super intelligence before something happened so that is kind of backed by a very recent tweet by a, a former science communicator from open ai i don't even know what does it mean maybe i'm a science communicator i don't know so andrew main has said on november 24 when everybody was speculating about q star is that in magic the joke is that if you want to protect a secret you publish you should publish it in i think in is missing in a magician's magazine because everybody will ignore it the point is when you publish something revolutionary but when it is also very obvious until you hype it up people will obviously miss it the same goes for up ai apparently open ai's blog post from may about improving mathematical reasoning in ai models nothing happened and then a person went again and asked did you even read the paper uh, because this seems like pretty modest realization something not um, you know there isn't warrant all the attention and andrew responded with the shrugging of saying i was a science communicator at open ai when it was published and um, that is kind of interesting because last time when i covered about q star i kind of came here but i didn't go deeper into so primary objective of this video is to go slightly deeper into it so what is this improving mathematical reasoning with process supervision and uh, this has a paper attached to it published on may 31st 2023 so if you go to the may 31st 2023 paper so you have got like couple of very popular names one is elia schutzwaker of course the other name is jan jan leke uh, i think who is also kind of left along with ilya or you know something like that and uh, the other interesting name is john shulman so john shulman is the one who actually talk about a q star algorithm in one of his mit talks in um, like 6 7 years ago deep reinforcement learning concept so i'm not saying this is again related to q star it could be like complete coincidence it could be open ai trolling or it could be a code name but you know something something to connect now if you look at this paper this is a very interesting paper and uh, not being discussed a lot this paper once again is a novel approach from open ai to solve math problems again this is in line with the speculation about how you know um, q star seems to be about solving math problems which ultimately could lead to solving greater problems at scale now what is this uh, the start the title of the paper is something like a lot of us who have used chat gpt knows very well let's verify step by step let's think step by step but this paper is much more than just simply saying let's think step by step or let's verify step by step what this paper is trying to do is this paper is trying to create an approach that would make the chat gpt or any large language model have a reward to incentivize have the right answer at every single step than having an outcome based incentivization so that means that every single step the model has to get right rather than just the outcome and that is exactly what the approach here is that there are two approaches one is an outcome supervised reward model the second one is a process supervised reward model and what this paper is dealing is this paper is saying that when you prioritize the process rather than the outcome so when you have a process supervised reward model ultimately the model is much better at solving math than having an outcome supervised reward model and in fact it further goes on one step ahead and then says that when you have a process supervised reward model prm model so the it it solves like 78% of problems one that is one but when you combine it with active learning that leads to 2.6% improvement in the data efficiency of process supervision so one is process supervision itself but when you combine it with active learning as a concept where uh, you know the model sometimes is let to get the data set that it wants to take in the training process the learning process unlike passive learning where you don't let the model pick the data rather you give all the model uh, all the data at once it seems like quite interesting to be honest like maybe i'm i'm overthinking but when you look at this uh, the kind of things that they went through and uh, you know when you look at these kind of charts the process uh, supervised reward model actually is quite amazing um 
and this is also a very important perspective from uh, a common sense point uh, i mean like the model is doing good the data shows you all these things that is all well and good like i'm not refuting any of these things available here but when you just like like literally think from a common sense perspective when i was in high school and when i had to do math like one of the easiest way to do math is uh, you don't solve 2 plus 2 equals 4 just like you know when it is easier it is fine but when it is complicated you go step by step you solve every single step and any mistake in one step is going to affect your subsequent step and then finally you're going to screw up your answer so this seems like quite how human beings usually learn like you teach a kid to spell a word you teach a kid to spell a word by giving individual character spelling not rather like telling the entire word i mean this is how human beings learn so this seems like quite interesting to be honest from what what it is and um, along with this um, around the same time you would have noticed like this a couple of months back OpenAI did something interesting on gpt4 paper that was like largely unnoticed at that point which is OpenAI actually built a model that could predict how the accuracy of gpt4 is going to be uh, based on the different scale like this is called predictable scaling so what they have done is that they have actually built a model we have developed infrastructure on optimization that have very predictable behavior across multiple scales so that means not just that they can say how good gpt4 is but they can actually predict how good gpt4 would be based on how many tokens that they have trained like for example to verify the scalability we accurately predicted in advance gpt4's final loss i mean what the model's accuracy on our internal code base that is not part of the training set by extrapolating from models trained using the same methodology by using 10,000 less compute. This is kind of like when you see here it is in line with what this led step by step and this is doing because here also they actually end up building small model. So in multiple places you would see they would have built a smaller model and that would actually you know help us help them in predicting certain things and here again you have a lesser model that can actually predict what the accuracy of gpt4 is going to be and around the same time like now if you keep this march april may around this timeline that is where open starts talking about the governance of super intelligence so on may 2022 may 2023 22 sam altman greg brockman Ilya switzwaker released a paper a blog post called governance of super intelligence and on the on july 5th 2023 jan like who we already mentioned on the let's step by step paper and Ilya sutzweger uh, actually released a paper saying introducing super alignment and they are specifically talking about super alignment so we focus on super intelligence rather than agi to stress a much higher capability level so i mean they are saying that super intelligence would be much higher and they're saying in a decade it might happen but you know you never know so when I put together all these things, one thing it seems quite obvious to me, like something had happened at OpenAI, what they're calling it as Q-Star. Nobody knows what exactly it is, but I think it could be one of these things that we discussed in this particular video. And maybe it is actually part of what the math problem is. But to before closing this video, recently, a couple of months back, I would say Google DeepMind released a paper on Q-Transformers which is scalable offline reinforcement learning via autoregressive queue functions. It's a combination of transformer architecture with queue learning from trans tra reinforcement learning and Lucid uh, Drains, a very popular person who is, uh, who is known for implementing these papers, recently, like a couple of days back, started creating the implementation of this queue transformer, which should be an interesting thing to look for. I guess this video offered you something different from what you have been hearing about QSTAR. If you have any speculations or you know anything, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, see you in another video. Happy prompting.